In this lesson, we'll talk about the time delta object, which represents a duration or a measurement of the passage of time. So it's not a concrete date or time, it's a duration, much like we say, oh, that movie is 141 minutes long. 141 minutes is not a date or time, it is a duration. It is a measurement of the passage of time. So let's take a look. At the very top here, I'm going to import two classes from my date time module. The first one is gonna be the familiar date time. And the second one is gonna be the one we're gonna explore in this lesson, which is called time delta. All one word, all lowercase. Delta, by the way, means difference. It's, it's a common mathematical term to use the word delta to describe the difference between two things. So time delta literally means the difference in time, the difference in the passage of time. So in order to get our first time delta object, we're actually not gonna use the class constructor. We're gonna get it by subtracting two date time objects from each other. So what I wanna find out is the number of days that I've been alive. So I'm gonna declare a variable called birthday and I'm gonna assign it to a date time object where I'm gonna feed in my birthday, which is April 12th, 1991. Now for this exercise, I strongly recommend that you put in your birthday because I think it'd be a lot more fun for you to find out how long you've been alive compared to just me, a random teacher on the internet. So of course, the arguments that we feed in here are gonna be the year, the month, and the day. So for me, it's going to be 1991, four for April 12th for April 12th. And in order to get today's date uh, as a datetime object, I can invoke a class method on the datetime class called now. And I'm gonna assign that to a variable called today. So now I have two datetime objects and I'm gonna subtract them from each other using the simple minus sign, the same way that we'd subtract two numbers from each other. So obviously the date that is in the future has to be the first one and then you subtract the date in the past from it. So I'm gonna declare a variable called my lifespan and assign it to the subtraction of birthday from today. Today minus my birthday. And if I print out the value of my lifespan, I'm gonna find out that I've been alive for 10,368 days, as well as 11 hours, 49 minutes, 11 seconds. And again, this is actually counting from midnight because I did not provide any hour, minute, or seconds arguments to my date time right here. So it's assuming I was born on midnight on April 12th, 1991. More importantly, if I take my lifespan variable and I pass it into Python's built-in type function, we're gonna find out the class this, that this object is built from, and it is built from the time delta class that is nestled within my date time module. That is the exact same time delta class that we imported on line number one. So the key takeaway here is you don't always need to use a class or a constructor in order to create an object. Sometimes you can simply get an object from various operations, right? And that makes sense because many times you're gonna invoke a method on one type of object like a list or a dictionary and get back something totally different like a string or a number. It's the exact same idea here. Whenever we do subtraction with two dates, we're not gonna get back a date, we're gonna get back a time delta. A really cool method that is available on time delta objects is total seconds. And just like the name suggests, it's going to give you the duration in seconds. So if I want to find out not how many days I've been alive, but how many seconds, I can go ahead below and take my lifespan, which is a time delta object, and invoke total underscore seconds. And that is a method, so it requires a pair of parentheses. When I invoke this, we're gonna find out that I've been alive for, let's find out here, 895,837,858 seconds. Pretty cool, that means I'm gonna hit uh, one billion uh, pretty soon. In fact, it'd be pretty cool to become a billionaire because then I could say that I earned at least $1 for every second in my lifetime. So now that we've seen how we can arrive at a time delta object, let's go ahead and create it from scratch. Below here, what I'm gonna do is declare a variable and I'm gonna call it 500 days and that's exactly what we're gonna model. Again, 500 days is not a specific date. It's not a year or a month. Uh, it is not a specific time. It is a duration. It is a passage of time. You can have 500 days in between any two dates, technically. So here, I'm gonna use my time delta class. And what it can expect is a bunch of keyword arguments. And the two prim primary ones that I'm gonna use here are days and hours. So I want a duration or a time delta, a difference in time, that is going to be equal to 500 days and 12 hours. Okay? So it accepts parameters of days and hours. It actually does not accept months or years. So you're gonna to have to model your years or your months in days. So this is obviously more than a year. So this is one way that we can go about it, all right? So I can go ahead and print 500 days 
on the right hand side and we're gonna see here it is 500 days and exactly 12 hours and what's really cool is with time delta objects because their durations they can also be added or subtracted so if I want to find out for example a certain moment in the future like what is 500 uh, days from now or 500 days ago you can use subtraction in these kinds of situations take a, a object and subtract from it uh, to find out so for example if I want to take 500 days and I want to find out what is double that duration I can simply add 500 days to this and if I print this out if we add together 500.5 days right because we still have 12 hours in here we're gonna get a total of a thousand and one days and zero hours zero minutes zero seconds and of course as I mentioned we can also add these time delta objects to our date time objects so if I want to find out what date it's going to be 500 days from now from today I can for example take my date time object which is represented by today this is a date time object and to it I can add my time delta object which is 500 days so 500 days from today we're going to get back a date time object which is going to be January 12th, 2021 at 11.53, 46 p.m. in the evening. So I've added those 12 hours there as well. I was recording this at 11.53 in the morning a.m. time. So now this is going to be 11.53 in the evening, 500 days from now. And that's all there's to cover in this lesson. We talked about the time delta class or the time delta object, which represents a duration or a measurement of the passage of time. So you can arrive at this object in many ways. You can get it from subtracting two dates from each other. You can get it uh, by creating it using the constructor. You can also use it to add two durations together, to subtract durations from one another, or to subtract or add from date times. And that way you can find out the difference between two dates. As we saw here, we can find out what happens if we add a certain amount of time Time, uh, subtract a certain amount of time, how far something is in the future, how far something is behind you in the past, just like we did my birthday. And of course, we also talked about that really cool method called total seconds, which you can use to find out how many seconds pass between uh, any two events when you have a duration representing that span in time. So pretty cool, versatile object, uh, lots more to cover. So I will see you in the very next lesson.